What's up gamers? Uh, Barnes here and this is going to be a uh, video response to Fistful of Dice. Um, I just put a video up about <clears throat> bringing new people in the hobby, teaching new people how to what RPGs are and how to play them. And so over the years I've developed a uh, method I guess you could say or <clears throat> attack to uh, teach people the hobby. And basically it's just a big game of what if. And so <clears throat> in this game um, the players are going to play themselves and they may not even not know that they're going to play but basically you say like something like what if there was a knock at the door, a really loud knock at the door. Um, go and answer the door and there's a woman there bleeding. Um, she seems panicked. Uh, she has a nice tan. She's wearing a business suit, uh, it's muddied, uh, it's got blood on it, and she asks you to come in, she needs help, uh, she wants to use the bathroom, um, you know, and uh, you ask them what they would do, and then you play it out. So, you know, it's just a, basically a big game of what if. So I'm, I developed this game of what if that I just drew that example from um, that concerns nuclear arms and espionage and basically I live in the United States so I picked a country that <clears throat> my country uh, has good relations with um, however we fought a war against Italy in the 1940s and you know uh, I guess there's you know there's a history there of at least conflict um, you know even though some would say like well that's a totally different story. I, I just used Italy because I needed I needed an ally of the United States. And basically, the story is it's just um, <clears throat> Italy was stealing secrets from the United States, and uh, we didn't notice that they were stealing secrets from us. But the Chinese did, or the Russians did, um, <clears throat> and her cover was blown by the Chinese and inside the country and. She's trying to hide out, and you know the there's a nuclear facility nearby, and you have to stop the Chinese from getting there. And um, <clears throat> you know, you can think of any type of scenario where the person would be playing themselves, and the story is one that they're used to. It's one that they're that a story that would appeal to them on the big screen or, or in a book because a lot of times if you know people aren't very familiar with uh, you know fantasy or sci-fi or, or the literature or films that inspire role-playing games plenty of films and literature have inspired role-playing games um, <clears throat> if you're not if you get into that world enough you're gonna know what role-playing games are most of the time you're gonna find them, or at least hear them, and kind of figure out what someone's gonna tell you. So basically, what I do is I, I bring them along a story that they can relate to, that they can play themselves in. So basically, like you know, a modern role-playing game. And um, my mechanic for resolution is a coin. You know, I, I just say, all right, well, I wait to the point in the story where they're telling me what they do or what they would do. You know, if what if this happened? What if that happened? what they would do and <clears throat> I wait to a point where there's some possibility of failure and that's the point where I say alright do you want heads or tails do you guys want heads or tails and they'll say heads or tails and you know I'll be tails from that point on or whatever it is throughout the game and <clears throat> uh, as we're playing along they'll, they'll get into it for a little while and they'll do different things and you know I'll get some combat sequences in usually with guns you know and uh <clears throat> at some point in the game someone will say well wait I'm better at that than so and so or I'm better at that than so and so so it should be easier for me and that's why I start to explain how RPGs have mechanics that address that and <clears throat> um, so from that point they, they know kind of like what an RPG is even though they're playing themselves um, they're still playing a role and they're playing themselves and it's a big game of what if and the possibilities of what you can do with a game of what if is, are endless and uh, 
it's easy for people to relate to themselves, you know, obviously. <laughs> like, it's easy for them to picture themselves in situations, because people already picture themselves in situations as it is, and what they would do. And so if you can come up with something that, you know, a what if that strikes their interest, you can illustrate to them um, kind of like what role-playing games are. or Kind of, yeah. And so, um, you know, it, at one point you just say, like, well, all right, after the game's over, you said, and then they, you know, I know role playing this game, so if that doesn't get it, you say, well, what if you were an elf? What if you lived in this fantasy world? What if you, you know, so on and so forth? What if you knew how to use a sword? Or, you know, what if you were from this star and, you know, had a phaser? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how I use uh, the game of what if to explain to people what role playing games are. Um, and I hope this helps somebody in the future explain the role playing game to somebody. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's great to hear new people are coming to the hobby. And uh, or it's always good to get new people in. You know? So if this helps anybody, I guess that's cool. Um, <clears throat> as always, thanks for watching. And I uh, wish you a good game. And remember to make it a good game for somebody else. Like Eddie, man. Make it a good game for Eddie.